your man in Vietnam, James Daly, Specialist 6, United States Army. Jim is a flight engineer, nursemaid to the Army's newest workhorse, the CH-54. He babies it on the ground and bullies it in the air. Makes it carry everything from tractors and trucks to bulldozers and artillery. It's an ugly angel that works like the devil. Who trusts a 26-year-old with the care and feeding of a million dollars worth of equipment? The United States Army. Even at its best, Vietnam is no tourist attraction. Jim and his buddies, like all GIs, make their own fun, and that's the best kind. Specialist 6, James Daly, your man in Vietnam. In today's Action Army, see your Army recruiter. Hello! Welcome to yet another episode of the Lions Led by Donkeys podcast. I'm Joe. With me today is Nick, per always, and Rich. Not always. Hey, I'm sitting here being verbally abused by these two. Yeah, well, that's how we get you in the uh, the right mindset. Um, we do this show. all the time to each other. Yeah, we verbally abuse each other, and then uh, it's like it's like making wine where you stomp on grapes to get the juice out, except verbal abuse in comedy. At least that's what my dad thought. <laughs> Your dad was a wino? No, he just stomped on me a lot. Oh, uh, so he didn't like wine. <laughs> now, he was, he was more of uh, a Bud Light guy. Ah, uh, but heavy on you. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. So um, it's been a while since we've had both of you guys on the show. Um, and I thought that we would combine your forces. So for people who are unaware, Nick is a sergeant in the United States Army. And Rich is a staff sergeant in the United States Army. Yep. Um, so I thought. Should it- I be? <laughs> Questionable. No. The answer to that is no. I, I made corporal. Uh, because that's easy, fuck though. Me, uh, yeah. Because nobody wants it. No, nobody wants. <laughs> that's uh, that's the the, the storyline of my entire life. Yeah, corporal is like the army's biggest fuck you to its soldiers, and that's saying something. I agree. I, I could not agree more. Um, so the reason why I brought you two together is I thought it would be interesting to see what two NCOs think about this topic, and I did kind of ruin the surprise um, because. Whenever I get rich on this show, she's like, why the fuck are you talking to me? Uh, why am I on the show? So I kind of have to tell her a little bit. Um, he usually bribes me with pizza, but little do you guys we're know. We're having pizza? We ate pizza no, last night. No, we're not night. having pizza. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> little do you guys know, pizza isn't even my food of choice. He just always uses his food of choice to get me here. I like burgers, so we're having burgers. Uh, because Papa Murphy's is very, very cheap, and I just clock it up to the Patreon bill. Little Skeezers is cheap. Uh, you know, I grew up in Michigan. I'm all Little Caesar the fuck out, yeah, man. Yeah, you have to be. Yeah. There's a whole arena named after I it. I try my best not to give the Illiches any money, because they're soulless goblins. Um, so have either one of you, before I kind of um, ruin the surprise, heard of Project 100,000? No. Negatron. Okay, so... Before I go into what Project 100,000 is, um, I know I did, and I know you guys do every day. You deal with soldiers who you have to ask yourself, how the fuck were you able to enlist? Yes. Yes. Um, now, I need you to keep in mind while we go through this. No. <laughs> <sighs> and I, I know NCOs don't exactly take outside uh, advice well, but... Uh... <laughs> Speak for yourself. Uh, so uh, I need you to keep in mind uh, through this. It's a different time, much different, about 1966. And Is it a different time, though? Much different. Um, so, for instance, you guys might not believe this, but about 95 to 98% of the current military has a high school diploma. That was not the case in the 1960s. Right now? Yes. Like, not high school diploma or GED? High school diploma. Or equivalency. So I don't know how they count that on the on the on the stats. Um, it just says diploma. Technically, a GED is a diploma. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, now, depending on what high school you graduated from, a GED might be a little bit harder. Uh, but so the ASVAB, which we all know now today as our standard entrance exam, existed then with a, with a slightly different name, and we'll talk about that. But I want you to gauge what you think a bad soldier is. To what we're talking about today. And I want you to kind of think 
maybe some soldiers are bad because they shouldn't they just shouldn't be soldiers. It's not necessarily the uh, fault. Yes, ten percenters. We're gonna go a bit less than that. Oh, okay. So we get to go back to when I first joined the army around the surge. Um, now I actually joined in two thousand five. Uh, but the search happened in 2007. Old bitch. <laughs> uh, now, for people who are unaware, the surge was a was a huge influx into the American war in Iraq, uh, otherwise known as Operation Iraqi Freedom. Kind of forget what it's called these days. Um, uh, the war was not going the way the Bush administration had thought it would. In order to try to regain control of the situation, they would flood Baghdad and the El Anbar govern government in general. This is one of the most of of recent topics I have heard. I'm, so I'm I'm talking about the the recent one because Project 100,000 got compared to the surge. That's not quite fair to the people who joined during the surge, but also because it's the closest equivalent that people mm, alive, yes, gotcha. uh, or uh, people who listen to our show. No, but nobody who fought in Vietnam has probably listened to our show. I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and spitball there. Uh, Don't spit in their face. (laughs) uh, That already happened, if you listen to the narrative. (laughs) Uh, Now, uh, one White House staffer put it, quote, if you're going to be a bear, you might as well be a grizzly bear. And I feel like that's a fair uh, gauge of the surge. Are grizzly bears like the worst kind of bear? Uh, They are the biggest. The biggest. They're also the California bear. Do they fight a lot? Yes, I have a video of it. I've heard that polar bears are very aggressive. They are. Uh, polar bears are super aggressive. So maybe uh, they should be hu- polar bears. So until humanity snuffs them all out of existence we through just... climate change. Oof. Grizzly bear versus Way to bring polar it down. bear. That's maybe my job. a pay per view. Grizzly bear versus polar bear pay per view. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they're uh, so the polar bear because they are dying is starting to crossbreed with other types of bear in northern Canada. Oh. Yeah, uh, koala bear. Welcome to the lines led by science, um, <laughs> which none of us are qualified to speak. Of. I don't agree with that crossbreeding. <laughs> I, I don't like my polar bears miscegenate <laughs> with the black bears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel bad even making that joke. Uh, yeah, I'm really sorry, guys. I regretted it as soon as I said it. <laughs> that bear is voting Republican. Your Texas came out so hard. Uh, so. For people who uh, were not in the army during the surge, Rich, when did you join again? 2008. Okay, so there was a lot of people bitching and complaining about the standards of enlistment falling. And that is somewhat true. But the main um, uh, standard they dropped was criminal waivers. Um, Now, even then, you cannot be uh, charged with uh, domestic violence. Um, Things of that violent felonies were not allowed. These are people who, you know, drug charges, uh, like Class C felonies, like uh, a minor oh. drug charges. I mean, well, even like if you if, say, I'm not saying you smoke meth, but if you get caught with meth, that's a Class C felony. Mm. So, you know, your, your felony may vary. Um, and a lot of misdemeanors got waived. They also waived um, uh, having a high school diploma. Uh, and that's how 30% of the entire United States Army ended up deployed. Uh, which is a lot uh, for what is not technically supposed to be a war. Um, now, waiving all of those things uh, uh, hurt the stats of the army a bit. Um, now, like I said before, greater than 90% of the army today and then had a high school diploma. Um, when the surge happened, that number dropped to 70%. So that, that is a huge drop in a very short amount of time. Because I, I believe I was telling Nick earlier uh, we didn't join super far apart, and we certainly didn't. But if you think about it, these people who came in on waivers, not saying they're bad soldiers, but they probably had a, a much lower level of education than us, are now probably your bosses. Or they probably did what I did to take in my ASVAB. I took it to get out of class. I also did that. Yeah. But I also did patterns on the Scantron and did not try, <laughs> but came out with a pretty okay score. That's somehow we're going to talk a little bit how those scores work in a bit for the story to make sense. OK, um, now that is uh, now some people say that's a big deal. But as I've said before, I'm a high school graduate and I was a terrible soldier. So your high school education doesn't exactly bring you very far in being a soldier. Um, now, anybody who has served in the United States military knows that you have to score on the ASVAB, uh, which is known as the Army Service Vocational Aptitude Battery. Uh, where it will judge where your your job ends up or what you can pick as a job. It's a series of math, writing, various other things. It's like a general test. It has like mechanical, like 
a whole bunch of different. Yeah, and the ASVAB is questionable at best because it said I should be really good at mechanics. And yeah, and I can't change my own oil. You might. If you actually learned how to change your own oil, like those are skills mm, that have disagree. to be taught. <laughs> like just never, ever, ever looking into how, how to change your oil and just saying you can't do it well, is kind of a cop out. Well, the, I'm taking the, the cop word out. problems were probably the dumbest things that like the gears going, which gear is going in this direction and what color does the waffle end up at the end? Doesn't make sense to be on a test. No, in my opinion. No. So more importantly than scoring highly, it kind of is a judge of how you function as a person. Uh, grades are test. Uh, grades of the test are broken out into different categories, from category one being the best, all the way down to category five. Category five is failing the test. Now, I know both of you uh, have told me in private that you know several people who have ASVAB waivers. About that, that did not mean they're category five. Oh. ASVAB waivers come from category four, which is the 10%, uh, they're the 10th percentile. They're the 10% the, the lowest scoring people in the population. Only a certain number of that, of that 10% can enlist. Waivers come from category four, meaning they did not do well on the test, but you didn't necessarily fail because it's not a pass or fail. Right. Um, they, they might have some problems. But they're waverable from category four. Um, now, a lot of people in the military like to think that they are surrounded by these ASVAB waivers. And it might seem that way <laughs> sometimes. Um, uh, but only 1% of new soldiers can be waivers, and up to 4% during the surge was the max it's ever been allowed to be outside of an experiment. Well, I guarantee you that myself and Nick have been around more than most because all of those waivers become cooks. <laughs> that is a relatively yeah. new thing. Yeah. We'll talk about that too. Um, now that might, I, I don't know. There's a lot of percentages getting thrown around and statistics. It's like a baseball game. You know, and there's a lot of people probably going to disagree with what I'm saying. And that's why I, I just went back instead of doing the normal thing we do and telling people to shut up. I just went to the rote statistics that the military puts out. Now, obviously, we know that statistics are variable and that impacts jobs, races, and communities much different than one another, which, by the way, we will talk about that much more in depth in a little bit. What I told you and what you've lived through. Did you have a burp coming out I on did. that one? Yeah, I did. Yeah, it sounded like it. I tried to breathe it through my nose. Uh, <laughs> it looked like you were now, swallowing it. Um, that's, swallowing is how you make the money. So <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Um, now... You, you guys and myself have dealt with um, some soldiers that you think that could not get possibly worse than this. What if I told you it could? And it did. Go on. So for me to do that, I have to go all the way back to the American War in Vietnam circa 1966. Uh, don't go back. Don't go back. Uh, New topic. <laughs> so anyway, back to the Soviet Union. Uh, New topic. <laughs> not that one. Uh, so the war was not going well for the United States. Um, over 6,000 Americans in by 1966 have died, and triple of that have been wounded. Mm. Um, the draft was kicking into high gear, pulling over 300,000 American men off the streets and throwing them into uniform a year, which happened to be the highest level of draft output since uh, ever. Yeah. Um, we? And as listeners of the show and hosts of the show, you know who that draft impacted the most, the middle class. Don't have the wrong birthday. The best class? Um, no, it's not. It's, not. <laughs> it's really not. Uh, and class we'll... that barely exists anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we killed that class. I don't have to worry about this problem anymore. <laughs> uh, so the draft is becoming incredibly unpopular. Uh, furthermore, uh, the Vietnam War, by all metrics, was already lost. Um, so the U.S. Secretary of Defense and world-renowned piece of shit, Robert McNamara, knew as much that the war was completely lost when he talked to journalists in private, saying, quote, no security exists anywhere, and, quote, there's no reasonable way to bring the war to an end anytime soon, and no amount of bombing will win this war. So, yeah. He also went on to say, like, at no point in the middle of the night do we control any part of Vietnam. <laughs> so the guy in charge of the war doesn't have high hopes in the war. No, he doesn't. Now, McNamara kind of gets a pass by lay people. Have either one of you heard of him? 
No. I okay. don't history. Well, most people put the blame of the Vietnam War kind of deservedly on Lyndon B. Johnson, Richard Nixon, sometimes even Kennedy. Yeah. The, the, the heaviest of that blame should fall on Robert McNamara. Um, yeah, there's, there's a good chance that if it wasn't for him, that the Vietnam War as we know it simply wouldn't have happened. Uh, for example, in the wake of the Gulf of Tonkin incident, uh, yes. which we will talk about in great we length should. at a later date. We should, because um, it's been on the board since, I think, day one. Yes. Fun fact, didn't happen. Anyway, uh, so he urged President Johnson to attack North Vietnam and purposely withheld calls from military commanders who were against military action. He withheld them? Yeah, so they were reporting to the, to the Secretary of Defense, like, we should not fucking do this, who then obviously is in turn supposed to report that to the president. Yeah, he just didn't do that. What, did, what was his angle? What did he get out of it? He wanted a war. Just, just for funsies? Not quite. Uh, a lot of people, uh, most people in Washington, and the vast majority of the United States at the time, believed in the domino theory. Um, so a long story short, the uh, domino theory was if you allowed a state to fall to communists, all surrounding states would fall to communists. So if North Vietnam took over South Vietnam, that would lead to Laos, Cambodia, and everybody else becoming communists, which is a... Oh, no. Yeah, which honestly ended up happening anyway. Uh, <laughs> one of those communists we actually supported. What up, Khmer Rouge? Uh, but we'll talk about those guys in a series much later on. Um, as long as it's not seven parts. No, no, no. It will be shorter be and okay much sadder. That. It'll be our first genocide we ever cover. Fun ooh, fact! Ooh, yeah. Uh, but um, that is the Vietnam War, a long story short. Um, he wanted war. He believed that the war was righteous, which he ended up kind of backpedaling on much later in life. I'm not going to give him too much credit because fuck him. Uh, but anyway, after he got those airstrikes that he won after the Gulf of Tonkin, uh, he immediately wrote a memo to the president saying airstrikes would simply never win the war and a ground war would be necessary. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He is he is the guy who's like, just the tip, I promise. Yeah. And then yeah, he, yeah. you know what? You know what, Nick? It wasn't just the tip. I don't, is that even possible for guys? Just the tip? Yeah. Never in my life. I don't, I, <laughs> like <yeah>. Air high five. <laughs> don't air high five that. We did. <laughs> Men- mental high five. It's exa- It's exactly what that is. Like, I, sw- I swear, I just never do stuff like this before. <laughs> but he <laughs> anally cored them. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. Yes. Uh, but the person he fucked was America not- and also Vietnam. It was a three-way. Um, but, so by the time the story starts, uh, McNamara would get his wish. Nearly half a million soldiers would uh, end up being deployed to Vietnam. One of the main lingering facts of Vietnam is most people remember it as a war of attrition. Uh, now, for people who are unaware, attrition, a war of attrition is simply killing as many people as possible. Um, this is also McNamara's idea. He attempted to apply a mathematical metric to decide the, uh, the amount of dead enemies uh, would eventually chart their route to victory. He fucking did math. Yeah, he was a nerd. What he was, a fucking asshole. He was known as the whiz kid. That's what you have, this is what you fucking have a problem with, that he did math? I what mean, a dick. In, in, the, in this situation, I'm forced to agree. Math. He did body math? Yeah, so if, if you remember... That's an asshole move. If you, like, uh, you've watched Full Metal Jacket. When they're course, counting yeah. bodies, they get body counts. That's what he yeah. wanted, so he could chart the metrics for, well, this is what our intelligence says, is how many people North, North Vietnam recruits every year. This is how many people we kill. Well... Is that accurate? So even if it was not accurate, and it it wasn't, uh, he thought at no point did we ever kill more people than North Vietnam recruited every year. By uh, by 1966, he he knew that. Uh, So he he already knew it wasn't working. Yeah. But he just went on for another fucking 10 years. (laughs) Less than 10 years, but more uh, closer to than than less. A long time. Yeah. uh, So... He wanted to kill people as a way to victory. Now, that for people who are not educated in military theory, that might sound like a fun fact or like a, a, a good way to win a war, but it's not. Um, because to do that, you have to ignore every other aspect 
of traditional military operations, such as controlling territory, winning over populations, especially when it comes to counterinsurgency. Um, long story short, it, spoiler, it didn't fucking work. Uh, South Vietnam doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so he actually did so bad at that metric for the war of attrition that a logical fallacy known as the McNamara fallacy was created. <laughs> they named it after him? Somebody, yeah, a group of actual mathematicians named this logical fallacy after him. That's awesome. Which is the exact opposite of a badge of honor, I think. Um, that's nerds hating on another nerd. Yeah, that that, that's nerd roast. Yeah. Uh, so the McNamara fallacy involves making a decision based solely on quantitative observations or metrics and ignoring everything else. So this, so for to make it really dumb so someone like me can understand, this requires you to say what cannot be measured does not exist. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. checks out. Yeah. So he was also uh, responsible for the horribly failed rapid fielding of the M16 rifle, which oh, will God. be that a future episode. episode. Yes. That will be next episode. So stay tuned next week for us to show in McNamara some more. Uh, anyway, even someone as totally soulless as McNamara knew that if he wanted to continue his little pet war, he'd have to find a way to bring draft numbers down while bringing actual enlisted men up. Uh, because the main reason for that, if he gets people to enlist, he doesn't have to worry about lowering the number of student deferments, thus pissing off the middle class, thus pissing off the main voting body of the United States. This guy's an asshole. What it came down to be is he could not make the war so unpopular that people would not vote for the president. Mm. He plays Sudoku. Uh, Sudoku. Yeah, he plays that on the side. He's an <sighs> asshole. I fucking hate him. Everybody who plays Sudoku is an asshole. I had a math teacher who played that. <laughs> I, I, I've never played a game of Sudoku. I tried, um, and I couldn't understand it because it's math. Yeah, well, I didn't want to. <laughs> we're standing hard on the anti-Sudoku crowd right now. I don't know why you would be anti-Sudoku. It's supposed to be really good for your brain. Fuck my brain. That's why, Rich. Yeah, well, your brain's already <laughs> fucked, so I get you. <laughs> some of us have a chance in this world. Fuck your chance. <laughs> uh, so in order to do that, he would obviously have to get more people to enlist uh, on their own free will rather than be drafted. Or, more than that, make more people available to the draft, which would not have been available before, so as to not draft the white middle class. Right. Um, so, the problem was there was a war going on, and listen, it sounded like a really bad idea for most people. Uh, now, a lot of people are saying, well, we've had a war going on for 20 years, and I understand that. I enlisted during a war. Everybody on this podcast enlisted during a war. But... All wars are not created equal. I am willing to bet if Afghanistan had killed 50,000 American soldiers, we all would have gave it a wide berth. Uh, I know I would have. <laughs> in, in that short amount of time, too. Yeah. I mean, Afghanistan has gone, off an almost, uh, it's gone on for almost uh, double as long, I believe, uh, by now. It's almost 20 years. Yeah. Ooh-wee. Yeah. Very close. Yeah, we have not even come close to 50% of wounded in that war. Um, now I know that sounds like a really cowardly thing for me to say, but I'm a cowardly person and I joined for college. So, <laughs> so full disclosure, yeah. I'm a pussy. There I are very <laughs> few people in the army who, when you ask why they joined the army say, because I'm just so patriotic and wanted to fucking go kill people. Like they all joined for other reasons. I know a few people who totally joined to deploy, but once they did, they were completely disillusioned. I joined to pay bills. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a career for, like, for the lower class. None of us exactly came from fucking busy, rich households. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Very true. I mean, we, came, we both came from a slum, and you wanted to get out of San Antonio. I wanted to go to San Antonio? You, you, can't, you wanted to get out of San Antonio. No, I didn't want to get out of San Antonio. I wanted to pay off my thousands and tens of thousands of college loan debt. That was really bad wording. I believe bad they wording, call it a but... freedom bill. <laughs> um, you unpatriotic fuck <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy when you go to college for something bullshit like culinary arts and rack up $50,000 in debt you can't get a job that actually pays that uh, I counter that there's no such thing as unskilled labor and your labor is highly appreciated but because of our economy they fuck over your skills and all that money goes to the person that owns your company right. anyway that's my labor uh that's my that's my labor message for this Stand episode. On topic, brought, yeah. brought to you by uh, Jalalabad Local Dick Suckers Union. <laughs> oh, we're doing that. <laughs> so, no, all right. Um, 
of it, like I said, he uh, McNamara had to make more people available for the draft. Um, now, so we're all fed that line where one percent of one percent is available for military service, right? Yes, that isn't totally untrue. Uh, the reason for that is high standards of education and health, and it also was mostly true in 1966. Um, so. It's according to a Rand Corporation report that was made after operate or Project One Hundred Thousand was over with. Um, so the report said one point eight million young men came to military age every year. That might seem like a lot. It's really okay. not uh, in, a, in a country as big as ours. Yeah. Of those, six hundred thousand would be ruled immediately ineligible for military service. This is based on uh, standards prior to the project. Okay. Uh, half would fail the physical standards. Uh, the other half would fail education and mental test score standards. Do you have the physical standards for back then? Um, I don't. But what it came down to was like you're too skinny, you're too fat. They didn't have to pass a oh, PT okay. test. It's, pro- it's probably worse now, right? Uh, the numbers. The numbers are much greater now. Like as far as far as military age males that wouldn't be eligible for service. Well, as one number inflates, so does the other one. So like our population is much bigger now. Um, so yeah, you know, if, if 50 million people would become eligible for the draft every year, I mean, there's going to be a, a healthy percentage of that, that I think would be mostly equal to the same number then would make you draft ineligible depending on what the ineligibility status of the time was. Right. So the, the, the variables are, are much different. Um, so this is where Project 100,000 enters, otherwise known as the New Standards Program. I feel like they could have picked a better name. I'm all about names. Well, it was an experiment. Even uh, then. It wasn't, so it's an experiment that failed, which is why I did not continue. Uh, but, um, that's yeah. why the name sucked. The project was, of course, a study to see how the hell they get those 600,000 people who rolled immediately ineligible in uniform somehow. Mm. So before we get how horribly uh, this went down, We'll start with an, the official explanation via the RAND report. So according to Robert McNamara, the main goals of the project were to broaden opportunities for enlistment, broaden the draft pool, no shit, upgrade the qualifications of disadvantaged youth and prepare them for more productive civilian life. Now, there's a lot to unpack there. I think for the first one is the draft pool, because it quickly became obvious that even if they started listing people with no fucking hands, they would still wouldn't have enough people to fuel this war effort. Um, they would just have to draft them, so they have to add more to the pool. Right. Secondly, is it me or when the government starts talking about disadvantaged youth in the '60s, you immediately want to throw up racism flags? Yes. Still. You know, there, there's a reason there that racism aspect of this whole thing, which will come flying in our face in a little bit later. It's the same reason why I support like a lot of draft dodgers. You know, uh, a lot of people hate our current president. I won't ask you to to comment on that because I know you're not allowed to. Um, my commander in my commander in chief, yeah, is the commander in chief of the army. You are correct. Um, the main reason why I disagree with some people when they came to hating him on, on draft dodging is because I would have tried to dodge the draft too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't hate him for that. I hate him for getting away because he's rich. Like if he just would have like severed a toe or like shit his pants in the draft office, I'd have way more respect for him than just Severed lying in a medical report. Yeah. You got a Yakuza that bitch off with a knife. <laughs> Use a shovel. <laughs> yeah. So. Jesus. <laughs> That's the sweet sound of uh, dollar store <laughs> carbonated water going into vodka. Uh, the last part allowed McNamara to frame this new project as a part of Johnson's so-called war on poverty. So war on poverty. Now it's it's going to sound weird if you're not familiar with Darn the war on poverty. Weird. Now the war on poverty was a, the attempt by President Johnson to expand the federal government's role in education, healthcare, and social programs. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, it does. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Right? We're still waiting. It's only been 50 years. Um, <laughs> now, the reason why McNamara framed this as a part of the war on poverty was because it was a job program. We're going to take the people that can't do anything else, and we're going to put them in the military. That's like those people that say, oh, the homeless people that are uh, of what age. What about our troops? <laughs> I'm going to take them straight to the recruiting office. This is exactly like the people who get really pissed off when I talk about universal education and like higher ed. Like, well, I didn't deploy to Afghanistan, so 
you know, Susie, whoever who works at Walmart and go to college. Like, I don't fucking care why you enlist but a dick why? back. <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah. If you didn't empl- deploy to Afghanistan for somebody else's freedom to go to fucking college and not be in a million dollars of debt, why did you? <laughs> it, no, I fought for the freedom to everybody to get the blood sucked out it's... of them by federal <laughs> student loans. That's what I fought for. They more deployed for the cool gram picks. Yeah. I assume. Yeah. <laughs> did, That's what I go do off Do it for of. the gram! The seal said as he stabbed the teenager in the throat. Ooh. Uh, ooh. That's kind of recent. because it's actually true. <laughs> yeah, it was. I don't think he did Instagram. I believe he did Snapchat. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure how much of that is true anymore, but you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, lions led by donkeys dabbling in the fake news. Uh, so, also possible Snapchat coming up on <laughs> lions led by donkeys. <laughs> yeah, when Nick deploys to Afghanistan, he's gonna, he's, he's gonna send us some glamour pics of him in the porter potty. Uh, now, like, yes, th- this is interesting to me as someone sitting in 2019 uh, because that same fucking attitude of 1966 could be copy and pasted and placed right back on us today. It's like any counseling I've seen. It's like, it's exactly like uh, today. Like people say that you know, we worship at the civil church of the military. And it's exactly what I, I believe this is where it starts. We did make America great again, Joe. Like it was in the 60s. <laughs> America's never been great. Next question. <laughs> um, now, it turns out uh, that by uh, lowering the military standards, you could bring in a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Firstly, remember we talked about those test scores. Yep. Categories one through five. Um, well, those didn't really matter anymore. Ooh. Uh, now I have to point out first that the project was only supposed to take people from category four, which we all know as ASVAB waivers now. Um, but soon they began taking from category five. It it should be noted that uh, at no time in since the ASVAB has been created, um, has there been people re- recruited from category five, <laughs> and that's for good reason. Now, I have to put a little addendum here. There's gonna be a lot of quotes from sources at the time. <laughs> That frame these poor people in a pretty unfair light. At no point of this episode are we going to make light of, of, of mental disease or defect or people being mentally deficient to be a soldier. But a lot of people back then did. Every time you lie, your ball's butt gets bigger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that because in order to compare some of these test scores, I had to find, well, comparisons. And some of those comparisons are not good. Uh, also, as you can imagine, much like soldiers today uh, do not have nice words to say about the people who may or may not be Category 4, people back then did not have nice things to say about people who were in Category 5. And, I mean, this whole... So, yeah, I'll just move on, and I'll just say now, if you are offended by Ugh. people saying the R word, just pause the episode. I... Possibly recently came across a soldier that was probably category four, and I felt very bad about the fact that he could not continue in our program. You know, and that's one of the problems here is like if it's someone who's from the population who's supposed to be recruited um, and they fail, failure is a failure, move on. It's their fault for not picking up. On what they're supposed to be doing, in my opinion, I could be wrong. I don't care. Uh, I don't train people anymore. Um, but if people who are category five and some people who are category four, um, they just simply don't lack the ability. Like they, they lack the ability to become a soldier. They have underlying mental illness. They have underlying um, developmental disabilities. They are being exploited. That's what it was. That's I, and I. I'm trying not to take it too far off topic here, but this soldier, like I was frustrated with him at first because I just, I felt like he wasn't motivated enough to be right. catching on to things. And then I quickly realized that he just could not catch, catch on to things. It was not, he was trying so hard and it just wasn't something that could happen. Right. And I want you to remember what he was like. He, right? Yes. Okay. And, and we're going to compare that to some <laughs> of the firsthand accounts that I have from the 1960s and we'll see how you feel. Um, sounds bad. 
So another thing that they did was waive physical standards. Um, so before they started the project, a study was done to compile what exactly uh, was was the physical barrier of American men for military service. Not like you were born without an arm. There's no waiver for that. Um, like I would you, hope not. You got to have your limbs. You got to have your eyes. Um, it turned out that a full 80% of them were either too skinny or too fat. So they just went ahead and got rid of that. Huh? Yep. Yeah, it just doesn't exist anymore. It's gone. The, so it didn't matter? No. The height and weight scale? It was gone. Like, gone. Do you I'm think gone. they did like a little ocular look at you? And ocular pat down? Yeah. No. They were just like, nope, gone. Yeah, you're good. It just poof. Nope. If you could walk into the recruiter station so, and there were spots, so there's only a certain number of waivers available for Project 100,000, which ended up being more than 100,000. But if you qualified for it, it didn't matter what you looked like. You could be morbidly uh, obese or look like you walked out of a death camp, which, yeah, we'll talk about that. As long as you could tell the recruiter, I can't sign my name, the recruiter would do it for you. Cool. I, I wish you knew how right you were. Really? <laughs> okay. Holy shit. Hold on. <laughs> Hold that thought. Uh, so there's also, uh, they also began to waive medical conditions. Um, my favorite of which is, quote, undescended testicles and hemorrhoids. <laughs> what? <laughs> For no reason other than I'm a child. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they, they, they had a list of waverable medical conditions. So their balls didn't drop. Yes. That would be the, the adult way to put that. So without giggling afterwards, yeah. Because I'm the only adult in this room. Yes. Just, just let's it, make that clear. That is confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. <laughs> so if you were, I, I'd already kind of ruined this part for you, but it, I already said more than 100,000 people got dragged into the uniform this way. How many people do you think found their way into the army? All of them. <laughs> so about 300,000. Holy yeah. shit, that's way over 100. I was going to say five. So. That's way over 100. Yeah. <sighs> that project name doesn't fucking work. So over 300,000 men would be forced into uniform that otherwise would not be able to enlist. Those recruiters made quota. So the vast, so some of these people found their way into the Navy and some of them found in the Air Force, but the vast majority found their way into the Army and a smaller percentage of the majority found their way into the Marines. Fuck yeah, because so, we do it in the Army. So we can no longer call Marines stupid. Uh, <laughs> uh, ruining all my stereotypes here. <laughs> so if you were to give these people a, a unkind nickname, I'm not going to ask you guys to come up with one because it's going to be really offensive. Uh, that's what, exactly what they did. Uh, they decided to call these uh, these. Poor people. McNamara's Moron Core. That's actually really creative. Did they that's tell them that they, ate, that they eat crowns? No, that, that, that's still Marines. This is just Marines in the, general? These guys, I'm pretty sure, would get lost on their way of eating crowns. Um, the, what if the crowns are sitting right in front of them? That doesn't bode well. Uh, the, the 300 and something thousand people that found their way into the program would not have a happy ending. Uh, so Project 100,000. This isn't a fun episode. No. <laughs> uh, Project 100,000 would have an ex- have would be an experiment um, if the military could lower standards and continue on with the mission. So this was to be a a project to see if this could just be how things are going forward. Um, every good experiment needs some control subjects. So right. every normal scoring uh, every, uh, every couple people a normal scoring person would be inserted into the project. Like, yep, you're one of McNamara's moron core. Um, now, they didn't know that they were part of anything. Okay. Um, nobody knew. They just thought, hey, I can join the army now. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, those people be used as a control to see how they do in training, how they score, and how they do later on in combat. Oh, this sucks. Like, <laughs> Yeah, they go to Vietnam. What? <laughs> oh, my God. It gets worse. Um. Since it was an experiment, it was imperative that the soldiers allowed through the project to be treated exactly the same as everybody else. Uh, the only people who were supposed to know it was a uh, project or an experiment was various HR personnel who'd wrote up, write up monthly reports on the soldiers while they were in training and then forward them to DC. However, it quickly became apparent to everyone what was going on and who was a part of the project. For instance, we found a firsthand account I have a Hamilton Gregory. Uh, he was a enlisted man who uh, reported to Fort Benning for training and was given supervision of a poor private he named John Gupton. 
he changed his name to he uh, changed it just in case nobody wants to know that their uncle or dad was enlisted into the army to test if dumb people could be good at combat um so the sergeant gave him this duty and said quote i want you to take charge of Gupton. Uh, i want you to go with him every step of the way he explained to the young man uh could neither read or write and needed help filling out his paperwork then added, quote, make sure he doesn't get lost. He's one of McNamara's morons. Oh, uh, okay. Gregory went on to say that Gupton was so thin he was nearly sickly. When he asked him where he was from, Gupton couldn't tell him or he, and could not remember what state he was from. Gupton didn't know America was at war or what basic training was. He didn't know how to tie his boots nor know who his left from his right. He shouldn't be there. <laughs> when he was given a rifle at the range, he nearly shot himself and was eventually placed on permanent kitchen duty. This did not stop him from graduating. I mean, everybody, everybody checks down the barrel, right? <laughs> I thought it was bad that they sent me soldiers who had never passed a PT test. That is the lesser of all of the evils we're going to talk about is the physical standards, honestly. Because someone could get in shape. Yeah. <laughs> somebody. Yeah. It just requires uh, somebody willpower. Somebody can get their mind. <laughs> yeah. If you're like mentally disabled, there's, you can't help that. There's no possible workout in the gym. Yeah. Yeah. Tr- no matter how like, many times you run along and sing uh, stupid songs, it doesn't help. That's where Sudoku comes in. <laughs> I think Gupton was beyond Sudoku. In fact, everybody's beyond Sudoku. <laughs> um, so Gregory tells the story of another man who was so small and weak, he could not throw a hand grenade more than a few feet. If you're not aware of what a hand grenade is, that will kill you. So can I also just say this? I have a soldier right now who I just did hide and wait on. He is a uh, 115 pounds. <sighs> I don't know how. I just wanted to point that out. I wanted everybody to know. <laughs> Two things. It's hard to like. I weigh over a hundred. I want I'm a hundred pounds over him. I want to one up. It's Nick. insane. I want to one up Nick. Uh-huh. We had a soldier at our last height and weight who didn't register on the height scale. She was too short. How low does it go down? To fifty eight inches. I need that she in American was units. Six. I don't know. What? Give me feet. <laughs> Give me freedom units. <laughs> I don't have my calculator. <laughs> Nick, pull that up. So, like, we're, our- we're really showing that we should be a part of McNamara's Morons right now. <laughs> God damn it. I was a tank crewman. I was already a member of McNamara's Morons. <laughs> now, if you're thinking, I've already kind of ruined this part, that well, these men would simply never go to Vietnam. Your brain's a smoothie, so. Yeah, my brain is so smooth, you can actually skip it across the nearest pond. Um, my backyard pond. <laughs> yes. Uh, so you're probably still wondering, well, if they wanted to be useful, they would still have to pass basic training. How would you pass basic training if you can't shoot a rifle or tie your shoes? Um, well, people simply forge their paperwork. Um, in many cases, drill sergeants would get together as a group, pick out the youngest looking one, shave their heads, and then, uh, appear at training to pass test scores for the privates. Um, so they just lied. They just lied their way through exams. Um, so the problem was they're using, they're either, you know, pencil whipping or using drill sergeants to pass these tests. So these people on paper look like they're crushing PT and rifle scores. Uh, now Hamilton Gregory notes that every company commander attempted to discharge these men as soon as they got them. Um, now I don't want to say it's for pity, uh, maybe that was some of them. Like, I cannot possibly bring this person to Vietnam in good conscience. Uh, they just simply had no idea what was going on, and they feared for everybody's life. Um, in every single case, that discharge was rejected. It's understandable. What is understandable? That they didn't want them there. No, I. it should have been every leader's prerogative yeah. to get rid of these people as it's soon as It's understandable that they didn't want them there. I thought you meant it was understandable that their thing got... Their- uh, discharge got rejected. I mean, it's understandable when you oh, find yeah, out. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's understandable when you find out the army's running them as an experiment. No, but I don't. Yeah, commanders, honestly, yeah. They did the right thing trying to re- get them out. Yeah. For sure. Also, she was around four foot eight. Oh, my no, God. No, no. Like, holy four shit. Four foot eight is the minimum of the scale. She was four foot six. What? Really? Yeah. Wow. So it, that's it, insane. It, if you get ambushed, are you supposed to pick her up and throw her at the enemy? <laughs> yes, she is the hand grenade. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't rip her head off before also, you throw it. Also, who doesn't know what a hand grenade is? Well, I meant that as like most people think, uh, hand grenades are like this spectacularly impressive weapon. Um, 
because they see it in movies and video games. In reality, it's really it's a really huge letdown when you throw um, it for the first time. Michael Bay hand grenades. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Even Call of Duty hand grenades at least have some fire. The yeah. first time I threw a hand grenade, I'm like, that's it? Yeah. That's all you got? All right. Um, now, uh, yeah. I've been quoting one person and, and, and picking from their first-hand account, and I, I need to underline that what he saw in Private Gupton was absolutely not an isolated incident. Now, there's a novelist named Harry Heineman um, who served with the 25th Infantry Division in Vietnam. Uh, he recalled in his 2005 memoir uh, that uh, in his basic training barracks at Fort Polk, uh, Ugh, yeah, the, oh God. The, the, the worst duty station of all time, he would look across the street and watch um, the, what, what he knew as McNamara's boys in a special training company. Uh, these they were, would keep them at Fort Polk. So this, well, Fort Polk was also used for basic training at the time. Yeah, I, um, I think I've seen a movie on it. Uh, something with Tiger, Tiger Land. Land. Yes. Yeah. Um, now, the important thing to remember is these aren't people who were just sequestered into their own company. They had already failed out of training multiple times, so they're just recycling through. What are they expecting? Eventually that they'd pass. They'd, oh, okay. they'd just learn through attrition, apparently. Yeah. Um. He said, quote, these guys who cannot hack it during regular basic training, he said, is painful to watch. Some of them cannot even get the hang of something so simple as standing in attention. They otherwise seem severely undersuited for military life. Uh, now, where do you think these people came from? The McNamara's morons? Impoverished areas. You would be correct. Um, now, Army recruiters targeted inner city African American populations and incredibly rural back roads and uh, incredibly rural communities. Uh, they rolled out new recruiting programs with slogan, slogans like, quote, Vietnam, hot, wet, and muddy. There's no place to make a man. That's not That's, even a good one. That's not a good one. No, it's not. I mean, was, the, was, was that Honestly, good in the 60s? I liked the Marine Corps, yeah, dude. Wet. <laughs> I liked you the, lost me money. I liked when the Marines were fighting a volcano. No, the, uh, the Marine giant. Dra- the, the dragon got so many people. Yeah, dude. I swear to God, it almost got me. <laughs> I was like, that's fucking awesome. I want to fight a dragon with a sword, with my bro. saber? I mean, kind of, though. Who doesn't? <laughs> I mean, I Didn't don't like Harry it. Potter do that shit? Yes. Yes, he did. Uh, yeah. Not with a sword, with a wand. Significantly less cool than a sword. Yeah, you're right. Um, I would rather have a wand than a sword. I would rather have a magical sword. Checkmate. Um, <laughs> Harry Potter also I can had a magical a, sword, so I fuck can, off. I can, We're moving on. I can whittle a wand from a tree in my backyard. It's not magic, Nick. I bought one at the Redden Fair for 15 yeah, bucks. We, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> Did uh, it work? No, I have yet to make magic happen. My, <laughs> it, it turns out my, my magical community college education. You can never make mag- magic happen with your wand, can you, Joe? And no matter how hard I try, <laughs> my, my magical moisture spell just doesn't, just doesn't work. Um, <laughs> uh, now, they also had glossy, glossy brochures with exotic locations and glamorous jobs portraying the military, even with the f- war going on full tilt now, as a good career choice. <laughs> Um, the pressure on recruiters to sign up more quote unquote volunteers for the program was intense. In many cases, recruiters grabbed men who in no way could take the test and did it for them, allowing them to enlist anyway afterwards. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. The flight of the army recruiter. Now, this actually, uh, I, I would be loath to not include some modern day perspective on this. A large group of recruiters just got in trouble for, uh, uh, not making new recruits take a PT test, and that was considered a scandalous affair. I saw that. Yeah, uh, it was like so, 300 people. So in recru- uh, when I was going through it, I did a one one one. I is, didn't even have to do that. Yeah, I had to do that. I did the one one one. That's what the glories of drawing in 2005. Yeah, you fuck like, it. you got all your yeah. fingers? Go to Iraq, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you were holding Valley Forge down. <laughs> Dude, uh, in basic training, whenever anybody failed anything, they're like, don't worry about it, you'll learn it in Iraq. <laughs> That's not for, good. For no, everybody, not for good everybody who all. doesn't know who's not actually military affiliated, one 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 is the opposite, or is the lower version, like half version of our actual PT test, which is two miles, two minutes of push ups, two minutes yeah. of sit ups. So we did one mile, one minute of push ups, one minute of sit ups. I smashed it. I I did not because the one 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 was it. fucking. Easy. I was just out of culinary school and a little chubby. My first time I did that one 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 thing, I think it was four weeks into basic. Really? Yep. Yep, yep. My my first PT test came at the end of OSIT. Nice. Which was four months long. Yeah. Uh, whoops. 
anyway, so if you're wondering who some of these people are that should not have taken the test, recruiters snapped up kids with IQs as low as 62. Now, uh, IQ tests are super hit and miss, and they're very subjective. So the Facebook IQ test, uh, how are those? Not that one. Uh, <laughs> that is just okay. there to log those your passwords. Those are actually the gotcha. most legitimate ones. I thought those were accurate. Yeah, if, if you get enough people to share your test, your IQ actually raises. <laughs> okay. Really, really, all you need is the likes. You don't, you don't need the shares. So I thought much. some yeah. of my boomer family members were super fucking genius. <laughs> I have some bad news, sir. Uh, so uh, I, I don't have a good measure of IQ tests since IQ tests are pretty pointless for the most part. But I do have a comparison. So a U.S. Supreme Court case, Atkins v. Virginia in 2002, drew the line of mental retardation, their words, not mine, an IQ level of 70. The purpose of that case is to decide how mentally deficient someone would have been or to protect them from capital punishment. I am not sure if that's ironic or just incredibly depressing that some people who are literally so disabled, they could not be executed by the state. That's were then super sent depressing. To Vietnam. Yeah. yeah. For, that's really depressing. For essentially capital punishment. Yeah. Yeah. It's just via AK rather than electric chair or whatever oh, they were using at the time. Man. Um, so, chaos. like I said, their words, not mine. Um, the recruiting goals also end up being overwhelmingly uh, that ended up impacting overwhelmingly Black Americans. Uh, so, before the project, if you were to guess how much of the United States Army in 1966, 24, or even today, is uh, is made up of African Americans, what oh. do you think it'd be? My number was really low. What did what you say? I said 24. 24 immediately. percent immediately. Okay, what do you say? That was a bad number. I want to go again today or then. Either is it or. similar? Can Either I go or. Again? Either or. You're not going to hit it, I Today, promise. Today, I would say 30 Okay. What do you think about 1966? Redoozies in 1966? Yeah. 60. 60% of the army is black? No. Yes. Going with it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. He's, All right, yeah, he's United, leaning in. Yeah, they really leaned hard into the Buffalo so- Soldier mythos. <laughs> 60. Do it. Okay. What is uh, it? So, at the time, only 12% of new recruits Fuck. were black. Just barely. Now, if you were to guess... How many of the 100,000, uh, Project 100,000 recruits? 80. 80 Too people? Much. 80%. Percent. How oh, much? How much you're going on fucking people. How much do you think? Uh, 80 out of 300,000? What is this, a CEO rate? <laughs> 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 ah, ah, oh, 60, 60, 60. 40%. Ah, I was closer than 40% you. 40% of all Project recruits. That's why you always go 60. Black. Um, now, remember... These recruits were supposed to uh, better themselves through military service, right? The war on poverty. They're, they're, go- they're supposed to make them better people, teach them job skills, and then release them upon America later. Job Be- skills, like bombing your local village. Uh, yeah. Uh, I know that's helped me a lot. The, the neighbors are terrified of me, <laughs> but I have a lot of job fulfillment. Um, now, like, they sold this as a job skills program like you're gonna learn to be a mechanic you're gonna learn to be a cook you're gonna learn to do whatever so misleading yeah well it, it exactly as it is today for the most part yeah. but but way more back then they're working way, on way it. more they're working on it yeah they've been working on it for fucking 100 years <laughs> it turns out the only thing they're good at is studying you afghanistan or vietnam um now most people think i know you guys uh the, there's a, a heavy part of our of our listening population is military or veterans, but even them and the vast majority of the civilian population believes that an entire army fights wars. Um, technically that's true. You can, you know, bulls don't fly without supply and all that stupid <laughs> shit, but we're talking about combat. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Says shut every, the fuck says up. Everybody Pogue. Combat, every combat arms person out there. <laughs> yeah, shut the fuck up. Pogues. Um, now I get it. Uh, my tank would not have gone anywhere without that fueler whose name I never learned. Um, but about 25% of the, of the military at the time had a combat related job that is being infantry, mortars, tanks, whatever you're, you're pulling triggers. Um, got some bad news for people who are joining in the project. 40% once again, would end up being infantry. Ooh, you know, it's kind of interesting about that. Is a 
a coworker of mine was talking the other day. There's um, two black males that I work with that are both infantry. Mm. Um, they're both 11 Bravos. And they were talking about how, uh, how much of a minority they are in the infantry world. Um, Very. I wasn't, I wasn't aware of that because uh, one of the guys was saying that in his basic training, he was one of three guys and uh, only two of them actually made it through basic training. So, um, I I didn't know that that was such a. It really is. So, I've had a bit of a um, a pet theory on that. Yeah, I want to hear. Actually, I would like to hear that. Yeah. So, um, now this is a mostly uneducated opinion. That's fine. I, which I get that from you all opinions. the time. Yeah, that's all my. That's opinions. fine. I'm used um, to it. Most people join the army. Um, the vast majority. Uh, had a family member who joined the army, who had a family member who joined the army, who had a family member or who less, joined yeah. the army. Now, if 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 I was a uh, African American man in the United States, and my dad served in the army, he probably fought in Vietnam. His dad, if he fought in the army, he probably fought in World War II or Korea. Well, if you remember during World War II, yeah. they could not have combat jobs. So there's, uh, you know. There's a the carryover uh, of generational racism there, where well, my dad was supplier, my dad was a cook, so I'm gonna be a cooker, I'm gonna be supplier. And I mean, people don't realize there's people alive today who could not have the same job as I had simply because of the color of their skin. Um, now that could change a lot with how long these wars have been going on, how big our armies got. Um, and I could be completely wrong. I could be talking out about my talking out my ass, but like. I wanted so like I, my my parents didn't weren't in the army. My grandparents were not the American army, but like you know, I wanted to be a paratrooper because it's what my grandpa did in the Legion. That's what I want to do. And they're like, "Nah, your eyesight sucks," which I end up which I end up finding out was a fucking lie. So I end up having to blaze my own trail. Like most people want to take over take over after their family, um, especially in in the. Uh. <laughs> I okay. can I can kind of see that. I can yeah, kind of see that. I can that. see that, but not, not not my path. Well, there's you know there's outliers for everything. Yeah. yeah. Um. I mean, when you joined, for instance, Rich, you could not do what your grandpa did. Right. My my granddad was uh, special forces, airborne, all of that. Um. And I and I did for a long time want to go airborne, but then I realized how bad it is for like your entire body and life. And right you know, drop that goal. But every male who joined the army before me and my family was airborne. Yeah. I mean, we're, um, we're still at the end state of generational change where only now, uh, can everybody truly do everything. And even then that's not really true. Right. There's still no female green berets, but you're right. You're right. in saying like, even though, even though they have, I could be wrong about that. I know some women have made it through ranger school. I don't know if they made it through special force school. If I'm wrong, I hope I'm fucking wrong, but I don't think I am. But even though, um, even though they can't, can do whatever they want, maybe they do just want to do whatever their, their dad did or their grandpa did, or I could, again, I could be talking out my ass. I hope I am. Um, but, at the time, these guys weren't given much of a choice because remember they didn't qualify for anything else. Um, and there, there is something of a notion of uh, African Americans were overwhelmingly impacted by the Vietnam War through draft numbers and, right. and casualties. The stats that don't quite work out. Um, it turns out that the that the percentage of casualties killed, wounded, and enlistments were in comparison to the overall numbers within the ranks and within the general population. But Project 100,000 changed all that. Yeah. <laughs> because it just had to find a way to make everything yeah. worse. This um, wouldn't be an episode if you did that. Yeah. Awesome. So some compassionate officers, once these soldiers hit Vietnam, would find any fucking job for them to do outside of patrols. Because they realized, like, it, it, if they send these dudes out, they're going to die. Yeah. Uh, or... What is probably more realistic, they're going to kill my other people. Yeah, they're going to put other people in danger. Yeah. Um, but that was by far an outlier, and uh, many of these guys suck combat. Um, so have you ever watched or read the movie We Were Soldiers? Uh, it was originally a book. Yes. Um, no. So the journalist from that story, Joe Galloway, uh, who ended up getting all sorts of awards for his actions in combat, even though he's a civilian, had a few run-ins with these soldiers. He said, quote, 
The young men of Project 100,000 couldn't read. They had to be taught to tie their boots. They often failed basic training and were recycled over and over again until they finally reached some low standard of competence. They were declared trained and ready. They could not be taught any more demanding jobs than trigger pulling. So most of them went straight into combat where the learning curve is steep and deadly. If you can uh, want to chart where this story goes. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go with the deadly part. So it gets a little bit more depressing than that. You're probably thinking now, you know, we now know people on the spectrum, uh, where they, the, you know, the autistic spectrum of people who, back, in the, back when I was a kid, you would just assume like, oh, they're hyperactive or yes. whatever. Yes. Um, so, and as, as many people know, uh, there is significantly more uh, I don't know, severe disabilities when it comes to uh, intellectual disabilities than that. Um, so let's talk about one of those. A soldier, uh, not one on the project, named uh, Robert Romo, who had served in Vietnam, was horrified to find out his nephew was being allowed into the army. You see, his younger brother had a form of Down syndrome. Yeah. In the arm. Down syndrome. His, his brother did, so not his, his, his Sorry, his nephew. Oh, okay. okay. Um, he quickly wrote a letter to, his, to a general uh, begging for them not to allow his nephew to serve. He, end, he ended the letter by, if you send him to Vietnam, he will die. The general ignored it. He would, yep. Romo ended up being correct. His nephew died within one month of arriving in Vietnam. Oh. Yeah. Romo's nephew would not be alone in his fate. A project, uh, sorry, soldiers of uh, the project were three times more likely to die in combat than their comrades. S- over 600,000 of them would die. Sorry, 6,000 of them would die. That's a big difference, Joe, first yeah. of all. Yeah. yeah. Really- <laughs> Second of all, it's really hard to be funny and quippy when you're just feeding us depression stats. Uh, that's my life. Man, so you have been on most of the time. Yeah, uh, more, this is how I feel every week. More people in the project died in Vietnam than anybody else. No, uh, 6,000 6, of them died uh, in Vietnam. Uh, th- the numbers aren't totally solid. It's around 6,000. That's terrible. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For the ones who did not die in Vietnam, uh, their misery would not end. Um, still, an unhappy ending would be waiting for them. Nearly half or 180,000 of them would be kicked out of the military for various reasons and given other than honorable or dishonorable discharges. Jesus. For really? what? They forced them into the yeah. fucking military? Then they're going to give them an other than honorable discharge? For what? <laughs> fucking- mm. uh, most of these things were what you would expect of people who are not adapting well to their surroundings, drinking, drug use, and talking back to superiors. That's horseshit. Yeah. Um, so... David Adelstone, the director of the National Veterans Law Center uh, from its founding in 1978 to his retirement in 2005, said one of the re- leading reasons that the military had for giving bad paper discharges for Project 100,000 men was, quote, unsuitability. You think? Little fucking wonder. The men were never suitable to be in the military yeah. in the goddamn first place. You think maybe when they get re- got recycled in training three or four times? Or when they were illiterate and couldn't tie their boots yeah. and didn't know what fucking state they were from. Yeah. Or that there was a war happening. Yeah. Like, I understand that, like, mass media was relatively new, but I don't care if you're from bumfucksville, Tennessee, you know there's a war going on. Uh, I usually go with Alabama on this yeah. one. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, it, it, yeah, it just doesn't. Yeah, I have family in bumfucksville, Tennessee, That's why I picked Joe. It. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Either one of us have family in Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, yeah, you know, there's, it's just mind blowing to me. It's like, you know what? I decided I would um, draft my dog into the military. Uh, and then I had to give uh, my poor dog Laika a bad conduct discharge be- <gasps> because she was a dog. How dare you? I know. It's like, it's this weird thing Don't that she was. Don't fucking say that when she has a kukri in her fucking hand next to me. Yeah. It, it's weird that like, yeah, one, we have a podcast kukri. And two, that I had to discharge her for being something, for doing something she was born with and simply could not change. And also she's right here, Joe. Well, it's it's kind of like kicking people out now who are not citizens. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, well, I will not agency. ask you guys to comment on that. You know how I feel. Our president is our commander in chief, <laughs> and he is a commander in chief. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you for that deep insight. Uh, now, this <laughs> thought the, really hard about that one. So this obviously flew directly in the face of the idea that the people who are enlisting or drafted would be better off. For pe- so for people who are unaware or people who've never dealt with the VA, such, <laughs> such as myself, uh, bad paper discharges or other than honorable or dishonorable discharges makes it incredibly hard to get a job and bars you from using VA disability or benefits. So the very reason that many of these people were tricked into getting out of whatever, uh, you know, urban center or rural backroads community, like, I'm going to get a job. I'm going to see the world. Like, now you can't get a fucking job. those people. You fuck them harder than you ever could have just by leaving them alone. Yeah. Did the Americans with Disabilities Act exist back then? I don't believe so. Uh, The ADA is relatively new. 80s, I think. Also... Yeah, the ADA is isn't doesn't impact the military. No, but all of these people I feel like should be covered by that. I believe all these people should have been covered by comprehensive government programs that force the military service. Yeah. But you know, it's they literally I mean, I know like I joke all the time, like, hey, if I never enlisted, my knees would work. But like if their life would be so much better if the recruiters never would have found them. And they never would have if it wasn't for Robert fucking McNamara. Um Sudoku motherfucker. <laughs> so you're probably wondering, well, Vietnam era vets are pretty bad off in general by the, the popular narrative. They're not, but also yeah. things get worse. Uh, their counterparts, meaning people who were rejected from military service and did not join outside of the project, we're still better off than them. Project members made nearly $16,000 less a year on average, which is uh, inflated for a uh, change with inflation, probably closer to thirty or 40000 now. Um, we're more likely to be divorced, go to prison, and we're much lo- more likely to be unemployed. Yeah. This is literally a project deployed by the American government to how they can make poor people's lives worse. Yeah. I would like to say that that surprises me. I, w- I would really like to say that that surprises me. Yeah. It just doesn't. And I I'm could... not impressed by this information, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I could not find a single firsthand account of a project member who are now aware of who they are. Um, there's a good chance most of them don't want to talk about it or simply can't. I imagine they just don't. I mean, I would hope that they don't. Uh, imagine how all these problems compound upon each other. Like, they're obviously not... I would argue nobody is mentally equipped to handle war, but they're certainly not mentally equipped to handle war and carnage and everything. They, they go through that. They somehow survive, even though statistics are against them. Um, they get back. They don't handle things well. Most people don't handle PTSD or TBI as well, which are two things nobody understood at the time. Right. So they get kicked out of the military, so they can't get therapy. So now they're very, very, very mentally disabled, but also now they have... Uh, mental illness yeah. stacked on top of them. Thanks, and they, now U.S. They, government. Now they can't get a job because they have a bad conduct discharge. Like, for instance, have you ever had a job or applied for a job that did not ask if you had a dishonorable discharge from the military? I know I haven't. I, I Army. I've been in for a very long time. <laughs> well, I mean, you had jobs. So, uh, Nick, Nick, I give a little bit more of a pass on that, but you were in your 20s when you joined. I was 20. I've had jobs, asshole. And they I were just had, under the table. Yeah. <laughs> I had some minimum wage jobs. So before what happens I joined. when you're fucking Mexican, dick? I haven't filled out a job nah. application in eleven years. So I remember my my one of my first and only jobs that I had before I joined was uh, working at McDonald's. I still had to know it if I had a bad conduct discharge. How do you remember that? You were like fifteen. Fourteen. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, I made uh five fifteen an hour minimum nice. wage. Yeah. I made five sixty five an hour as a lifeguard. Mm, skilled labor. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I worked at a shooting range. <laughs> oh, that that makes so much more sense now than knowing that your dad's an LAPD officer or oh, what or was. Man. Uh, I'm I, I'm curious. Out of reflex, did he just turn and shoot you because you're brown? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, his fucking LAPD instincts. <laughs> yeah, it's kicked in. Yeah. Colored person. He's brown too. My dad's brown too. Every time, imagine, every time he, he walked at in the mirror, house, he would put against shit. the wall like, oh, fuck. Through the Sorry, badge babe. mirror, everybody's white. Uh, anyway, what, what shit talking about his family too much more? Uh, I, I will close this episode out uh, with a quote from me. This is a terrible episode. Yeah, I through, fucking hate it. From a, from a Colonel David Hackworth. I don't like it already. Now, Colonel David Hackworth is a pretty well-respected and uh, well-decorated soldier from the Vietnam War. 
Ah, so I can expect something good. I'm going to say the most critically thinking quote from a high-ranking member of the military in general. Uh, he said, quote, Project 100,000 was implemented to produce more grunts for the killing fields of Vietnam. It took unfit recruits from the bottom of the barrel and rushed them to the war zone. The result was human applesauce. Ooh, that's, that's not good. Yeah. He's not wrong. He's not, but Still, Jesus. I mean, I, I feel like, because like for me, I had a hard time writing this episode, writing the script, because I had to expand upon how ridiculous this was and it is ridiculous it's incre- it's one of the most exploited uh, like ex- exploiting things i think we've ever talked about um but also be like respectful for the people who fell into the trap because it's not their fault they were right. exploited by the government i'm not like every time I, I i talked about you know mental retardation or or disability like one i wouldn't use the the, the hard r word there with without it being a quote from the supreme court which is what it was uh, and I apologize if anybody was upset by that, but um, we had to expand upon how disabled these people were to to underline how evil the fucking Secretary of Defense was at the time. Because, like, how could you do that? That's like going into an old person, like a retirement home, and be like, well, look at all this labor. Like, we, these people could be building roads. Sure, you're, you're, you're not qualified at all, and it'll kill you, but look at all this labor. <laughs> I mean, so our ideas, research, medical, uh, like medical statistics, all of those things like on uh, mental disabilities and everything are still evolving and relatively right. new yes. and very, very, very sometimes outdated and, and need to be reformed so i can even i can't even imagine what they were back in the 60s oh definitely and, and i'm not saying like why didn't they understand what the spectrum was like i'm not saying that they had standardized tests for that and they disregarded them yeah. and and the people who otherwise would have passed and failed otherwise were waved through and the people who simply could not even take a test were waved through um like I'm not expecting a military recruiter from the 60s to understand mental disability. Yeah, no. I don't I mean, understand a military recruiter in 2019 to understand mental disability. That's completely it's completely unacceptable and I'm not trying to excuse it by any means. I'm just yeah. saying that like we're we're still not where we need to be on all of that. So. We we never will be. We're always working backwards. Yeah. All, the America will always be working in our back foot for for mental disability because it's like, well, have you tried going for a hike or thinking positive thoughts like bitch my brain is melting like <laughs> i've had a recruiter friend try to get one into the military just because well there was a story not that long ago well fuck probably 15 years ago now um where the marine corps uh recruited someone who had autism um even understood then as autism really like the kid's parents knew he was autistic and this is so long ago this is like pre-spectrum so he was he was pretty pretty heavily disabled and he did not um, adapt well to boot camp, as one would fucking imagine. Yeah. Um, to include like having fits, um, and when he acted out, he'd get violent. I've um, seen that firsthand. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's you know it's it's not his fault. It's, it's just it's no. just how his brain works. Um, he would piss in canteens and drink from them. Um, I've done that on accident. I've also done that on accident, but it was a water bottle. <laughs> There's not a lot of room in a tank. Rich, Rich looks like she has never done that. Um, first of all, girls cannot piss in canteens or water bottles. Well, not with that attitude, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Second of all, why the fuck would you? It's dark. I can't see. I don't want to get up and go somewhere and pee. Sometimes that shit ain't an option. Anyway, uh, this this poor kid ended up graduating boot camp somehow, and he ended up um acting inappropriately with a underage girl. Oh. Um, I believe he grabbed her. I'm not excusing that, but I'm willing right. to bet he did not understand what he was exactly, doing. Exactly, yeah. Um, and that I don't I couldn't find any update on that case. But you know, this this kind of underhanded recruiter bullshit still goes on, but this is like systemic. This this was planned. And that's why I think it's you know, we've covered the bonus march or the bonus army, which is probably one of my still my favorite episodes. Um that's a good one. We've covered a few other things when it came to underhanded shit the government has done to its own people. Um, this, I think, might be the worst. Um, 
pretty bad. It's up there. Yeah, I don't think we've ever covered anything that is so just so victimizing for people who already had life so hard already. Like these are people who were obviously were not going to school. They probably weren't going to have anything resembling a job, um, or they were you know disadvantaged um, youths from uh, you know urban centers who were already discriminated against from race right. and, and went to a school that was third rate because the government was not funding it. And then they're going to be thrown into the killing fields of Vietnam. It's fucking gross. It hits a little close because one of the cool things that I will say about reenacting was one of the units I was a part of had this little thing where they allowed like autistic kids to come in. And it, for one of the kids that I was really close with, it almost seemed like it cured his autism. Like He was awesome. Like At first, when I met him, he had fits over loud. Whenever we went to air shows, loud mm. radial engines would fly over and He'd had fits in the middle of a tent. It's fucking terrifying. Yeah. It is terrible because he's young. He's throwing fits. There's public around. Yeah. And then you have to handle a child. But also, he's fucking strong as shit. Also, you don't know how to handle anybody who's being violent. I don't know how to. Exactly. Violent. Especially a child. Yeah, I don't. So, it hits a little close to me in that way, but also... Yeah. I mean, there's, uh, there's outlets that people can use. I mean, I think... Um, like people said, like people who are savants uh, are much happier once they find out what their outlet is. I'm not a mental health professional, but um, you know, it's um, now imagine that person was in the army because cause so, that happened. So the same the same kid he wanted to join the air force and the army. He understands now that he can't right because of his disability. Now imagine like someone came to him knowing that's his dream. Like you can enlist, you take it. I mean, who wouldn't? It's I not. Know, it's I not know. his fault. Like, it's not. It's not any of these people's fault right, that they no, were exploited. Not. But like, that's what somebody did. It. it they did the. Uh, the. It's like if you went to, uh, a payday loan place. Like, yeah, we got your money, man. We can give you money. Is it bad for you? Yeah. We'll eventually drive you to kill yourself, possibly. But we got you. That's what the government did to yeah. 300,000 people. If it doesn't eventually drive you to kill yourself, it'll definitely drive you into a lifetime worth of debt that you will never, ever, ever, ever get out of. Yes, but in this situation, debt is severe mental illness. <laughs> yeah. I mean, same as you. I'd rather have the debt, I guess. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, thank you, Rich, for dropping by our hot box of a studio. Yeah, yeah it's super um, fucking... I will not come back until you get air conditioning in this bitch. One week. We're getting in a week. <laughs> Can't wait. Um, I'm Nick, so done sweating. Nick, I would thank you, but you have to be here. Uh, <laughs> um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, this was actually the episode that I paired against the Pepsi Navy episode for voting. And now you see why the Pepsi Navy episode one by about a hundred votes uh because this isn't uplifting at all no it's not yeah uh but it's pretty damn depressing i hope this burger is fucking good <laughs> it's not gonna be good enough to get taste out your mouth who's making the burger <laughs> oh it's gonna be me okay <laughs> <laughs> so if you think what we do is worth a dollar you can throw us a dollar on patreon it'll get you a bonus ep- at least one bonus episode a month it'll get you access to our episodes early if you donate five dollars or more you get two bonus episodes a month you get either a free digital copy of the hooligans of kandahar or citizen of earth also you get everything else that the one dollar people get um if you want to wear a shirt why not it be our shirt we have hey, new- lots of people wear shirts. Uh, I've been told people wear shirts. Uh, the All best, the, time. the best people are telling me that people wear shirts. <laughs> the best people are wearing shirts. Yeah. Uh, we have shirts. We have the best shirts. Um, <laughs> Uh, we have new shirts available, and we are currently working on one. Uh, I'm so ready for it. A T72 is fueled, fueled by balls. Uh, and I can't, can't wait. Uh, it's being worked on by front of the show, Francis of Hell of a Way to Die. Speaking of Hell of a Way to Die, if you give a dollar to our show, you get access to our communal Discord, where you can see all the dumb shit that we talk about all the time, and where the idea from this episode got started. Uh, so you can be part of that. Um, for everybody else, rate and review us on iTunes. Our other episodes will always be free. Thank you for tuning in, and uh, we will talk to you next week. Bye, guys. Later.